So what is the hallmark of a great chicken tender? Well, first of all, of course it has to be tender and it also has to be crispy. It has to be juicy and it has to be flavorful. So let me show you how to make it. Right, so let's talk about the chicken. Yes, I know there are chicken tenders that you can buy and yes, you can get them if you have them available to you. But I'm gonna use two chicken breasts because that is what is more readily available for me. To prep this chicken, all I'm gonna do is simply cut it into strips. And now the thickness of the strips I'm planning to cut it to is about half an inch to three fourths of an inch at its thickest so that when you go to fry them, the batter won't burn before the chicken is cooked essentially. Once the chicken is prepped, go ahead and get it into some sort of container or vessel so that we can go ahead and season them and brine it. And speaking of which, I'm going to first season it with some salt. I'm going to season it liberally because you want this to be well seasoned and when you pour in the buttermilk, it's going to dilute it a little bit. Of course, it wouldn't hurt to add in a few cracks of pepper unless you're allergic, then I guess omit it. Optionally, you can sprinkle in some garlic powder and also optionally, you can sprinkle in some onion powder. Now, once that's all sprinkled in, go ahead and add in your buttermilk. You just need enough to cover the chicken essentially. So you can go ahead and now massage it to make sure that the buttermilk mixture is covering all of the chicken strips to make sure that it will brine evenly. And once that's done, you can go ahead and cover that and let it sit in the fridge for at least an hour overnight It's best. Full disclosure, I only brined it for an hour. However, while we wait, we can now make our barbecue sauce. And the ingredients are as follows. I'm gonna go in with some ketchup, some vinegar. I went with apple cider vinegar, and any vinegar really is fine. Some brown sugar, this will give it the sweetness. I'm also gonna add in some molasses and what the molasses will do is essentially add it a nice depth of flavor while adding a little bit of sweetness. This will just bring your barbecue sauce to the next level. And then I'm also gonna go in with some Dijon mustard. You can use just yellow mustard if that's what you have on hand. Whole grain if you're fancy. And then for my other seasonings, I'm going in with some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some smoked paprika for the smokiness, of course. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir. And like always, I'm gonna forget to add in my liquid smoke. This is the brand I use. I only add a small touch, about half a teaspoon. You don't need much of this. It is very strong stuff. But give this a whisk to make sure everything is well combined. And then you can go ahead and take it to the stove to cook this a little bit on medium heat. I'm only gonna cook this enough so that the thickness is to my liking. And however long you decide to cook it, just remember that the barbecue sauce will thicken further once it's cooled. I only cooked this for about five minutes on medium heat, and that was perfect enough thickness for me. And I guess, speaking of the viscosity, let me just show you. I'm going for about this kind of thick, almost gloopy-ish texture, and that's where I want it. Again, it's gonna thicken further as it cools. And speaking of cooling, go ahead and remove it from heat and let it sit aside to cool down. After brining your chicken for at least an hour, which you did, right? Go ahead and take your chicken out of the fridge and in a separate bowl or container, go ahead and put in your flour. I used about a cup and a half for the two chicken breasts. And to season this up, I just use the same seasonings. So I went in with some salt, also with some pepper as well, fresh cracked. And then the same optional spices, which is the garlic powder and the onion powder. You can add more spices if you want, but this is what I'm going to go with. Give that a quick whisk to make sure that everything is combined. Make sure that all those seasonings are well dispersed. Lastly, you're also going to need a baking tray to keep all of your chicken that has been battered. Before we start battering the chicken, you can go ahead and add in about a tablespoon of that buttermilk into the flour. And then just with your hands, go ahead and run it through, making sure that there's no big lumps. And this will just give it some flakiness when you go to fry it. To batter these, you're simply going to take one of your strips out and let it drain off as much as possible. 
and then dunk it into your flour. Now you're gonna try to pack it in as much as you can. You want a lot of flour packed in and and there should be no dried spots on the chicken once you're done battering it. If there are still some dry bits, go ahead and batter it some more. As you can see, all of those little bits of buttermilk is gonna give it some flakiness. So go ahead and do this for the rest of the chicken. And once you have your tray full, it is time for frying. Into a large pot or wok in this case, go ahead and pour in your fry oil up to about two inches, but no more than halfway. Heat the oil until it hits around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it comes up to temperature, go ahead and add in your chicken strips. I would only add about three to four pieces max, no more than that because the oil temperature will drop a lot if you add in too much and cause your crust to get soggy and you don't want that. Well, if you do, then go ahead, but I don't want that. Cook it for about five to seven minutes until it's nice and golden and the internal temperature reads 165 degrees. Go ahead and remove it and put it on a paper towel so that the excess oil is wicked off and then move it to the other side of the rack so that it doesn't steam and get soggy. Once your chicken is all fried up, you can go ahead and plate it and there really is no technique to plate it but to just pretty much dump it on the plate and then serve it with a side of your barbecue sauce. And when you have a plate like this, it is time for the taste test. All right, so I say let's just dive right into this. All right, so I want you to see, look at these flaky bits right here. That was the result of adding the buttermilk into the flour. Without further ado, let's give this a try. Cheers, again. That was good. Before I talk about the tenders, let me just show you one on the inside. All right, so take a look at this. It's nice and tender and juicy. Thanks to the brine, it broke down the protein a little bit. And you know it's a real piece of chicken because of all the chicken fibers in here. How do these taste? Well, they taste very good. It's very flavorful from the salt and the garlic powder and the onion powder that's been put into the batter that's been put into the brine. And speaking of the brine, the buttermilk broke down the protein so it's nice and tender. It's not chewy at all. And it's cooked perfectly which means that the chicken is not dry. And like I mentioned at the beginning, adding the buttermilk into the flour gives it a nice flakiness. And that's what you want. That gives it the nice crispness to the chicken tenders. As for the barbecue sauce, it's so good. It's honestly, I would say better than like McDonald's barbecue sauce or any fast food barbecue sauce. You can taste everything that went into the seasoning. So you can taste the onion garlic again. I put that in here and a little bit of the smokiness from the smoked paprika and the liquid smoke. And then to cut everything through, the little bit of vinegar and the Dijon mustard. And of course, the sweetness from the brown sugar and the molasses. And the molasses adds a nice kind of like raisiny taste to this. So I would recommend adding that in here. If you like this recipe, please hit that like button below for more videos like this. You can hit the subscribe button or that one right there. And from a previous video, you can hit that one right there. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.